Hi, I'm Don from Don Drones On. I am now absolutely certain of what happened when my drone went out of control on September the 1st and hit 90 kilometers per hour. And it wasn't the wind after all. Let's check it out. Before I go any further, let's do a quick recap of what happened. So September the 1st, 21 degrees, very light wind, very normal flight, just about 250 meters away from me. Suddenly my drone went completely out of control and in a matter of seconds hit a maximum velocity of 90 kilometers per hour. Yikes. Now, thankfully, I hit the return to home key that managed to control the drone after a few seconds and I got control, landed the drone, and everything's been fine since. It's been flying absolutely flawlessly. Um, you can watch the video that where I explain this in uh, the link up there. You may also want to watch the follow-up video I did a few weeks ago when uh, DJI support was trying to convince me that the, uh, the drone got hit by a very strong wind and I, I clearly rebutted that. So since that time, a, a lot of analysis has happened from uh, folks online in the droner community, such as Randy Green. Thank you very much, Randy. And uh, I've had a number of discussions with DJ, DJI support. So let's uh, walk through it. So the first big clue is the flip around, and I actually showed this in my very first video. Let's watch the flight log here on the flight log viewer. The red arrow is, the, is the, my drone, and it shows the direction it's pointing. This is exactly what I was doing. And then right about here, or here, it uh, suddenly flips around. See, boom, boom, almost, almost 180 degrees. That didn't happen in reality. That's a clue that the aircraft is thinking it's pointing in another direction than what it actually was pointing. Remember, I had camera view the whole time, and the whole time I was pointing, sorry, <laughs> not sure which way to point. I was pointing towards this shore over here. And I know this shore like the back of my hand, so I know for, for a fact that the camera was pointing over there. Let's have a look at the, uh, at the graph. So this is a graph from the detailed log uh, captured by, by the drone. The two lines here are the green line is the aircraft direction according to its IMU and the, the red line is the gimbal uh, yaw. So both of these are the, the yaw, so the horizontal direction of the craft. And the x-axis is, uh, is time in seconds. So as you can see at the beginning of the flight, the two are very close together. Apparently that little gap is, is normal and, and not anything to worry about. And you can see even when I turned right around from one direction to the other, the two tracked very closely together all the way along. This is when I was doing the, the hyperlapse here. You can see it's pointing in exactly the same direction the whole time, the, the two IMUs. But here's where something went wrong at, at second 722. The gimbal yaw, which is the camera view essentially, stays pretty much steady. The direction of the craft, according to the IMU, suddenly changes by about, if you measure this, well, it's showing down here, by about 130 degrees. So you can see for about 30 seconds, those two yaw IMUs are, are way out of, out of um, whack, basically. And then eventually, after a lot of messing around down here, and I suspect this is when it, it basically uh, got its wits together, they start to track again. And this is clearly my return to home. There is another little dip here where it goes crazy. I don't know what that's about, but essentially it, it tracks to the point that I return home. So this picture is a little more complicated, but I'll walk you through it. The, there's basically three graphs here. The top graph is the rudder which is what they call the, uh, the joystick that, that controls the, the yaw. So the, the left joystick, uh, left and right position. And as you can see, when I was doing the hyperlapse in this flat zone here, I wasn't touching the stick. And this dotted line is that mysterious 722 second point where the yaw error occurred that you could see on the other graph. Okay, so clearly I didn't rotate the graph. The stick is absolutely 
straight on. You can see I'm I'm wiggling the graph trying to or wiggling the joystick trying to uh, get control back through here. Apparently not very much for yaw, but there you go. I did I did try something. Um, this set of graphs down here is the yaw, exactly as the same um, picture that we saw in the last uh, scene here. And you can see the the um, OSD yaw is up here and the gimbal yaw is down here, indicating there's a yaw error. And by the way, these two little dots on the graph here show where uh, hyperlapse pictures were taken. And so again, you could tell from the hyperlapse that the, the craft did not actually turn around, even though it thought it did. And then this bottom graph here is the speed in meters per second. You can see, you know, moderate speeds here. And then during my hyperlapse, it was going, you know, in the order of a half a meter per second. Um, and then at that, that fateful moment when the yaw error occurred, you can see it wildly flew out of control, hitting a peak of over 25 meters per second. And then it kind of slowed itself down for whatever reason and then settles down into a, a normal range down here as I, I regained control and uh, flew home. So, so absolutely telling that the first thing that happened was the yaw error. Aircraft seemingly turned around and then obviously as a cause and effect sort of thing with the yaw error, the speed picked up and went out of control. So why would a yaw error like that cause the aircraft to rapidly accelerate and go out of control like it did? That's a good question, but I've got it figured out. Let's have a look at this simplified map that I've drawn here. I've adjusted the directions a little bit just to keep it a little simpler. So here's, here's the lake that I was flying on. Here's my flight path here. I launched and I went along here and where this star is here is where the yaw error occurred. And as you can see, there's this slight breeze coming from, and I, again, I've simplified it, but basically coming from the west along the length of that lake. And this is the prevailing wind, totally normal. And uh, so, so let's, let's think about what happened here. Okay, so, so here's my drone. Let's suppose that it's pointing north. Okay, so towards me is, is north. You've got this slight breeze coming from the west. And so, of course, anyone who flies a drone has seen this, it will compensate by tilting or pitching into that wind so that it compensates as the wind pushes it. So if the wind is pushing it, it detects that and pushes back by tilting or pitching into that wind. Totally normal. And that's, that's called a, a negative uh, feedback loop. Uh, and it's a perfect example of an engineering control cycle. Uh, you, get a, you get an input it detects it, it provides a compensating factor and pushes back, maintains its position brilliantly. All right, now let's suppose we have a yaw error like we did, where instead of thinking that it's pointing north, it's actually thinking that it's pointing south. So that wind still hits it, that's, that's real. <laughs> so it thinks it should pitch into that wind this way, to compensate because it thinks it's pointing south. So the wind hits it on this side, it pitches this way, but the reality is that it's really pitching this way. So when it tries to compensate for that slight wind, it's pitching in the exact opposite direction that it should be and starts to move even more out of position. So it thinks, oh, there must be a really strong wind now because I compensated for it and it's getting worse. My position is getting worse. So it tilts even more. And because this thing is so fast in its control cycle, which is why the Mavic 2 is so stable in a, in a wind, it rapidly goes out of control and accelerates massively. And that's exactly what happened to my aircraft on September the 1st. It's a perfect explanation for it. Positive feedback loop, rapid acceleration, out of control. And again, that's what you can see on these graphs. You can see the yaw error occur here. So the craft thought it was pointing in the opposite direction. And as it tried to compensate for that very slight breeze, it 
goes into a positive feedback loop, goes out of control. Apparently the props were actually going something in the order of 9,000 RPM at the peak of this. Scary. So this explains 100% what happened. There was a yaw error, positive feedback loop caused the craft to go out of, out of control. But what caused the yaw error? That remains a mystery. I'm on the page of a, of a bit flip within the device, um, probably caused by cosmic rays, but I'm protected now. Um, and this kind of a thing is very common, can occur uh, randomly, and in most cases is corrected by the next uh, memory write to that uh, location. So a little bit of an explanation of that in my preceding video, uh, and you can see that up there. So what does DJI support had to say about all this? Well, if you recall, the, uh, their original statement that came back after an analyzing the flight logs said, as we see here on the screen, there was a sudden strong wind and basically I ignored it. So they, they told me originally that it was a strong wind that blew the craft away. You can watch my video about where I, I, I think about that a fair bit. So I, I told them the, to jump in the lake on that and go back and, and have another look. So they reconsidered. And this time they came back and they said there was a temporary miscalculation with the flight controller at one point. They will improve the stability of the flight controller and will be covered by the warranty. What does all that mean? First of all, what's a temporary miscalculation? Is this something I should try on my taxes? Sounds like a good plan to me. Um, but okay, now they're saying that there is something in the craft that went wrong. It wasn't that idiot who ignored the wind warning. So that's good. Um, they will improve the stability of the flight controller. Well, that implies that they are gonna try some sort of a fix, which is also good. Um, and then they say that it will be covered by warranty, which makes no sense at all. What's covered by warranty? Is there a repair that I need to do? They don't say that. So I asked all these questions and back and forth we went. I ended up getting a call from uh, this guy, this, this guy Ken, his supervisor in China. He called me on the phone. Um, he's actually talked to me twice. He's also left me a voicemail about a completely different case, which was not a very impressive call. But um, we did talk twice. It was, it went nowhere, believe me. But then they did come back after I explained what I thought the, the symptoms showed, and they came back with this one. So another uh, long song and dance here, but bo bottom line is they say there's no fix. You know, I asked about, well, is there a fix coming and a firmware fix or something like that? No, there's no fix because it's a random issue. So uh, contradicting what they said last time. And then they said uh, th their explanation for what happened is that the flight controller fro froze due to too much information. Well, I could give them too much information. The uh, flight controller restarted itself and recovered in the end. And they're saying this because they don't want to, you know, get accused of having a fault. No, they, their machine operated properly. It determined there was a problem and it restarted itself and recovered. So they're they're kind of covering themselves with that sort of statement. So now it's a random issue, no fix. Flight controller froze due to too much information uh, and it restarted itself. So I, I totally believe that the flight controller probably did freeze and that in, in fact explains why my joysticks were no longer responding in any way. If the flight controller is frozen, I can play with my my sticks for as long as I want, but it's not going to do anything. And then maybe that's why it was kind of swirling around a little bit when it did recover because it was processing my random joystick move movements. So uh, maybe an additional part of the story here. So that's that's good. Um, since then, again, I've talked to these guys. Uh, they've suggested that I send the craft in for repair. And I said, well, what exactly would you be repairing since you say there's no fix? Oh, well, that, they were kind of stumped at that. So they said, no, you don't have to do that if you don't want. Um, so there you go. I, I'm kind of left in the lurch at this point as far as DJI support goes. I have escalated um, and they've acknowledged the escalation. Um, but I have a feeling it's just going to be the, 
the guy, his name is Francis, who's going to call me from China and say absolutely nothing. But we'll see. I remain hopeful. But as far as I'm concerned, I don't think there's really a problem with the drone, or at least not with my drone specifically. Um, so that's good news. So, so there you go. Um, I'll keep you posted if I hear anything more from these guys. Um, in the meantime, I have flown many times uh, since then in exactly the same spot, no incident whatsoever. I took a lovely fall leaves uh, video. You're welcome to look at that on my site. Uh, I've flown in other locations, again, with no incidents, no nothing. Just everything's flying perfectly. Uh, so I'm pleased with that, at least. Of course, I'm watching it like a hawk uh, all the time. So with that said, I do have some recommendations for, for everyone, inc including myself. So three things. Number one, I would recommend recalibrating your IMU and your compass regularly, not just when the machine asks for it. Um, I wouldn't say every flight it's necessary, but I would say maybe, maybe once a month. Just recalibrate your IMU, recalibrate your compass. They're very simple procedures and they're pretty quick. So just go ahead and do that. Number two is land immediately if you see anything weird happening. Like if, if again, if you watch my first video, I, I mentioned that at the very beginning of my flight, it wasn't, it was drifting. Um, I don't know whether that's related to the problem or not, but uh, in retrospect or the next time I see it do that, I'm going to land right away, recalibrate everything, launch it again, see if it's repeating that and uh, and go from there. So if anything weird's going on, land, because you could be seeing the front end of something funny go, uh, about to go wrong with your craft. And number three, be prepared to take uh, emergency action if you like. If your joysticks don't respond, try the return to home button, try the cancel button, try the, the little toggle on the side in the case of the Mavic 2, uh, switching between sport, um, mode whatever that is and and uh, the the tripod mode try flicking that apparently a lot of people have said that that kicks it into uh, into a different mode it sort of restarts things so all of those buttons are available to you uh, different different machines of course have different buttons but uh, keep that in mind and be prepared to hit those things if uh, if your craft goes mental on you so there we go. Thanks again for watching. Uh, leave your comments below. Subscribe to my channel, like this video, and hit that notification bell so you can see any more videos that I come out on this. Thanks again. Talk to you again soon.